Hey Islanders, welcome back to another episode where today I'm going to be showing all of you how to evolve your queue into a priority queue. For those of you that don't know, my name is William McKean and you're watching Islander Robotics. Honestly, leave a comment down below if you're an OG and you remember when Disney Channel used to say and you're watching That's So Raven or and you're watching Kim Possible. But anyways, I'm an electrical engineering student turned computer scientist student and honestly everything you all see on this channel I taught myself through watching... Ex a whole boatload of YouTube videos and reading a lot of books. So with all that being said, please sit back, relax with your favorite snack, and let's get started, shall we? Hey, Islanders, I hope you all enjoyed that open intro. Honestly, today's video is going to be presented to all of you in a little bit of a different format. So let me know down in the, well, down in the comment section down below on what you all think about how I presented today's information. As well as, I just want to go over a couple of things with all of you. In no shape or form, really, should I be considered an expert in Python? I mean, I would say yes, I do have an extensive knowledge of Python, but really what got me started with Python was all through my life, well, since I was about nine, oh, actually younger than that, I've had a passion for robotics, all right? And right around sophomore year of college, I started to learn about artificial intelligence, and that's really what developed a second passion of mine. And those two actually merged into one, well, one passion I have now, which is artificial intelligence robotics. And that passion really gave me the desire to not only learn Python, but I have a passion and I'm on this journey to master Python. So that's really what this channel is all about, is the projects that I show all of you in these series is how I learn that I learn the best is by project based Python and really what I want to show through each video of these um, of these series is the milestones that I was able to conquer and I presented to all well I show all of you because I want this channel to be an inspiration for your projects as well as I want to allow this channel to widen your knowledge on Python alright so with all that being said I'm actually going to be giving you all a little bit of a inside scoop in today's video that really you should listen to your data structures professor. So that being said, we, why don't we actually get into the script for today's video, which is the thing that I got up right behind me. Now you're all probably gonna notice a lot of different, well, a few different cha uh, changes. First one being is that we actually had to rechange the name of this class. Reason being is, well, did you all know that the threading module has a class, well, a Q class as well? I didn't so when I was running this code and I was getting errors for the first like hour when I was incorporating the two I really didn't read the error messages I was just assuming and that caused a lot of headaches so what I did with to get around this error was actually just rechange the name of this class to Islander Q. Now also because I want to make this class a very well it's going to be relying a lot off of the link list class I also decided to make Islander Q a child class of the link list class and really what that allows us to do is actually manipulate a lot of the stuff within um, the link list class inside of the Islander Q class alright so really that's the big stuff that I changed over here on line 4 and then continuing on to actually line 6 this is because we made Islander Q a child of the link list class what we have to do is actually initialize that I guess you could say that bond and the way you do is that do that is you actually call the class in our circumstance we have an alias for this class LL and then you say dot init and you pass in the self argument another change we actually made inside of the init method for Islander Q is we actually created this boolean variable priority and the way you can honestly think about this boolean variable is let's say you want to evolve your favorite Pokemon. In my circumstance, it's Eevee. And whenever I want to evolve my Eevee, I'm going to usually use a Thunderstone to evolve it into Jolteon. So in retrospect, priority equal false means I have an Eevee. So as soon as I change priority to true, in ret well, in the same retrospect, I am giving my Eevee a Thunderstone to evolve it into a Jolteon. All right, and then the next part of the code that we actually changed, and really the main reason why I made this class into a child class of linked list is this priority method right here. And it doesn't work for anything. It's not worth its weight in gold at all, but I really wanna show you all so that you all can learn that taking the easy way out is not always the best way. And really my thinking behind this class in theory would work where I have a well a method that works a lot like the insert method but instead of having an index I have a key value 
to make a, some some of the logical decisions. And then throughout this class, that's where I'm going to be pulling apart, adding, and all that stuff. But it doesn't work for anything that's worth. So really, when I came over to the Islander stocks, and I was getting errors inside the top, I tried really, really hard. I tried for hours to make these two will make this theory work but it wasn't really going to work as well as within this top method I made a lot of rookie mistakes all right first one being is that I thought for some reason over here on line 74 defining this dictionary that I each time through this for loop that those variables would get redefined I it wasn't and each time I was calling the dot push method from the Q class I was just importing the same exact data Right. So in order to actually re well refresh the temp dictionary right here, what I did was this temp put that um well declare the temp within the first for loop. And then at the end of the nested for loop, I delete the temp. So therefore each iteration of this for loop, I'm getting a brand new version of temp. Now I'm not going to run the file, but instead we're actually going to switch over to the code that actually works properly which is going to start off looking a lot like all right so i just tried achieving my goal of evolving my q into a prior q and i failed at it miserably what's the next step how are we going to actually achieve this goal well what you're all seeing being developed right behind me is called a heap also known as a heap sort and honestly this is going to be the keys to our success reason being is for its primary well it has a very cool characteristic of it and for those of you who don't know what a heap is, it's actually a type of data structure that's classified as a tree data structure. There's a lot of different types of tree data structures and they're all developed around the same idea where you have a branch node and a leaf node. And yes, I just said nodes and they're very similar to a linked list or a queue where they have a node portion of the data structure and inside of that node you have data but unlike linked lists and queues instead of saying next we're actually going to be saying left or right we're not going to be going too far in depth on trees or tree data structures as well as this code Re really the reason being is because we're going to be going pretty far in depth in next video because we're going to be working with a binary search tree. So if you want to learn more about how to actually create a heap or a binary search tree, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get notified when I post my next video. Now within the tree data structures, there are self-balancing and non-self-balancing. A heap is actually considered a self-balancing tree and I do air quotes for a very particular reason. The reason being is because the way that a heap is actually self-balancing is you physically have to tell heap to call a function called heapify. And what heapify does is it goes into your tree, your heap, and it rearranges it into a way of either A, the maximum value is at the root, or B, the minimum value is at the root, It depend depending on if you pick a max or a min heap, all right? My understanding of a well, a self-balancing tree is a is a tree that it automatically balances itself out without you, the user, physically telling it when to actually self-balance. All right, so that's kind of my theory on why I consider it more of a self well, a hybrid of a self-balancing and a non-self-balancing. But really, I do suggest going out on Google and typing in what does a binary heap look like. Once I actually made the decision to actually implement a heap into the software. Um, I actually just went online and wanted to get some inspiration from how people are actually implementing a heap into their software and honestly I was very frustrated seeing a lot of the tutorials out there using a list as if it's a heap in theory yes it does work but you're losing a lot of the efficiency not only in the memory but also in the speed of its sorting so honestly to me it would be a lot simpler to actually use merge sort instead of just some heap that's not actually a heap if you get what I'm saying luckily for me I took a data structures class a couple of months ago where we actually had to create a heap in C++. So what I did was actually took that C++ code and I translated it into Python while at the same time adding my own little piece to the code. And really I'm very proud of this code because of one really big reason. Not only did I make it successful for my application of heap sort, but I also made it so that all of you Islanders at home can actually use heap sort and the priority queue inside of your own software. So go ahead and check out the link down in the description bar down below. There should be two GitHub links, one to the actual uh, stock analysis tool as well as a link to a GitHub for 
the priority queue as well as the heap module so that you all can actually copy and paste this into your own code and use it from there. I'm also working on publishing a lot of these modules on to PyPI so that all of you have an easier way of actually getting access to the modules that we're working on on this channel. So with all that being said, now the next thing to actually do is implement this heap into our code, which is going to start, which is going to begin with, like I was saying earlier on in today's video, we're going to be going over how to actually create and implement this heap inside of the next video, really because the next method, the next function, the next thing I want to add to the software is a binary search tree. And since they are both tree data structures, as well as they use a lot of the same methods, it'll make a lot more sense for me to actually be going over those two data structures at the same time. So we're just gonna go into actually taking that heap and implementing it into the code. And the next thing, well, the heap is going to be implemented into the Islander queue. Nothing's really changed inside of the Islander queue except for when we give our queue, that evolution stone to evolve into a priority queue, everything's getting routed to our heap. So really the next big interesting thing that actually has some change is going to be inside of the Islander stocks.py. And over here on 72, this is where we're actually putting all of our data inside of our heap. And really nothing changed between earlier on in today's video and now except for what's going on on line 80. And this is how the queue actually self-balances when we call heapify. And in our circumstance, we have to say self.q.heapify and we're going to be passing in our key argument. You, if you don't have, if you don't have a dictionary that you want sorted, you can null and void this because this is going to essentially be a, what's the word? It's a non-necessary um, input argument, all right? No matter what, if you have an input argument in this, if you don't have an input argument, it's going to work no matter what. If you have a dictionary, you do have to have an input argument, but I'm just saying that the next function that we're gonna be talking about is going, is something I'm really proud of because essentially what we're doing is we're translating the data from essentially tree, I guess you could kind of say tree language, to our human language really. And that's because when you're getting, when you wanna see what's inside of your tree data structure, there's three ways post order pre order and in order and when you're seeing the data that's being that's being posted out from those three implement well those three methods they're not always in um sorted they're not always sorted in the values that you would expect them to be sorted they're sorted in the values as how they're imported into the tree all right so what we're doing right here is we're actually taking that data we're translating it into a language well a format that we more clearly understand by appending the data to the list and then from that list we're actually going to be printing out the values that we want so top value is going to be however many va top values you want to see and then that those values are going to be printed out now I did say earlier on in today's video that essentially being able to sort a list as a heap is kind of pointless however we're not really doing that right now instead what we're doing is actually just translating the information you can completely disregard this if you wish I'm just saying it's going to be you're not really going to be understanding the output that's coming out because it's not going to be sorted in a way that you are typically um, used to and really once we have all this information down and it's out we can run the code and I'm actually not going to let bore you all with me running the code you've all seen me run the code several times now so we're just gonna skip over to where we get the output of the code here we go we got all the data sorted by the price values from greatest to least which is exactly what we want and I'm sorting the Amex right now this software also works on the NYSE. However, for some reason, the NASDAQ is not really working on being imported into this list. I've tried importing it as a queue. It's not really giving. So if you want to go check out today's code and honestly copy and paste this and work on it your own on yourself and then let me know how you all were able to fix it go ahead and do that the, like i said earlier on the github link is down in the description bar down below i would honestly love if you all could help me out with this part but we were able to sort the data based off of how i wanted it and honestly i am ecstatic and cannot wait for the next part of this video well the next part of this series which is going to be implementing a binary search tree i am really very ecstatic to actually be showing you all how to actually create your own binary search tree as well as I have a bit of an announcement that binary search tree is not going to be coming out this Wednesday instead it's going to be coming out next Sunday at 10 or well, 11 p 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time what's going to be coming out on Wednesday is actually going to be another little mini series I'm going to be having going on just for the next couple of weeks which we're going to be creating my very own Raspberry Pi server something I've always wanted to do I'm very I'm very intrigued in server, the way that servers work, how you're actually able 
to operate a server. So that's what's going to be going out for the next couple of weeks on Wednesday. Really just because I want to give myself more time on when on really creating these softwares. So that's what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of weeks. And then after the next couple of weeks are up and we're going to be going into August, I'm actually going to be switching my uploading schedule from every Sunday and Wednesday to either every Sunday or every Wednesday. I haven't really decided yet. Let me know down in the comment section down below on which days you would all prefer. And really that's all I got for today's video. Please go right on ahead and hit that like button like I was saying earlier. This video was supposed to go out Wednesday, but some of the software was not working correctly, so I wanted to pull my hair out many times throughout this week. So I'd really do I really would appreciate it if you would hit that like button. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section down below. As always, happy coding, and I'll see you all in next video. Bye.